So here we are in the Revit 2010 point-based kernel curtain panel system. Uh, it's just a regular rectangular panel. And while you can make a panel like this, where you just make a nice flat extrusion, it has the problems that we saw in the images that are in the blog. So I'm going to show you how to make something that works in a little bit more flexible way. And the first thing that you're going to need to do is select all these points and make their work planes visible. And you're going to do that here through the properties. You're going to make more than just the normal reference plane show. And you're going to make them show always. And you can see now we've got these nice little stars around each one of our points. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this work plane, the horizontal work plane on this point, the active work plane. And I'm going to put a point on it. It's going to give that scary thing, which I won't care about. I'm going to grab that point that I just put down there, and I'm going to show you that there are some cool properties that go with this, namely offset, which is sort of a parameter that just goes with points that are hosted on a work plane. And I'm going to actually parameterize that for use later. I'm just going to call this uh, point, oops, point height. And I'm going to go around, I'm going to do that same process with each one of these points. And drop that. Ignore the scary warning. Put another point. Ignore scary warning. Put another point. Ignore scary warning. So each one of these points is now hosted on the work plane of another point. And they move in a particularly funny way. They move up and down as opposed to swinging around uh, as you could have seen with the other kinds of points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to parameterize all those points now through the instance properties. So now they're all going to snap to attention at the same height. And I can just sort of see that they're all moving together. And I can see that they're all moving with their points. And now I'm going to use those as a skeleton to make more geometry on. So I've turned on 3D snapping for my rough lines. And now I've got a rectangle over my other rectangle. Now, if I do another create form this way, I'm actually making a blend rather than extrusion that uh, you could see before. And this particular thing is going to behave very differently than a regular extrusion, as we're going to see in a second when I load it into a family. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that, load it into the project environment. So I set up this geometry that has a divided face on it. And first thing I'm going to show is how it behaves when um, you put sort of a standard extruded panel onto it. Works just fine, but um, if I zoom in on it, you can see that what it does is it fragments the face, which is fine if that's what you want. Um, it's basically just extruding the rectangles that it's hosted in. But if you want a nice seamless surface, you're going to need to use our special handy-dandy point-based extrusion or blend that we just made, which is going to do this. See, now what's happened is that each one of those points has extruded uh, in the same way as its neighbor. So if I undo this for a second, you can see that these two guys that both started here don't share the same vector. And if I go redo back to here, these guys share the same vector. So they then make a seamless face. And that then can be the basis for doing all sorts of other things that create seamless geometry.